Hello, everyone. This is part one of session 14 of Pre-Socratics to Augustine, also called History of Philosophy 1. We are talking about Plato's Republic, and we are getting to the so-called middle books, books five to seven of the Republic, where Plato is discussing what he flags as an incredibly difficult question. And that's the question, what is goodness? Or what is the good? And in yet another formulation, what is the form of the good? Why do we get to this question? The ideal city that Socrates and his interlocutors are constructing in speech has, among other things, the feature that those who are the rulers, the governors, are philosophers. And Socrates is aware that that is kind of an outrageous idea. That is not the kind of thing that people otherwise expect. So it is something that needs to be defended carefully. And one of the ways in which he defends it is to ask, you know, if you were to want a really good governor or ruler, what would that person need to know? And in one sense, it seems like that person would need to know kind of everything because in order to make good decisions for a city, it's not enough if you just have this or that specialization. You ultimately need to understand, you know, human life, how to organize it, what is good and bad for human beings. And that is then sort of what, what comes to be seen as the, the single most difficult thing that you would need to know what is good. And until today, as of this thing, that, that that truly is a really difficult thing. So the idea is that the people who are going to be the rulers of the city, they go through this, through this long educational process with 20 years of mathematics and all sorts of things in order to eventually understand what goodness is. And then the middle books of the Republic books five to seven, try to sort of get clear about this idea of what is goodness, how can we know goodness, and what is sort of metaphysically goodness. So at this point in the Republic, Plato is introducing what is one of his most, you know, famous ideas, namely that there is such a thing as forms. So rather than just talk about what is goodness, we are talking about the so-called form of the good. And we are just taking this as an opportunity now to ask, you know, what are the forms? How can we make sense of this idea that there is such a thing as a form of the good? And, you know, don't feel that you are alone if you're not immediately clear about what that should be. Aristotle, who is, you know, Plato's most famous student thinks that it is entirely incomprehensible what Plato meant to say when he spoke about the forms. So if you think that it is not comprehensible, you are in good company, but we are going to try and make sense of it. And there are a lot of reasons for taking Plato's proposal seriously. The intuition is that we call a lot of different things good. So you might say that something is a good toaster that someone is a good tennis player, that something is a good book, or that a movie is good, or that a person is good, or that, you know, your computer is good. And it seems that we can sort of truly predicate the property goodness of all those really different things, like books or ideas, theories, toasters, people. So it seems puzzling what it is, what feature of these, all these different things it would be that we can predicate of all of them. And that is a question that, that Plato as it were identifies as a philosophically intriguing and important question. Because it simply doesn't seem that, say, a good theory and a good toaster have any feature in common. Or it's at least not clear what the feature would be. So there is a project here in philosophy to ask what it would be. Now, Plato's proposal is, and this goes back to what we discussed already, starting with the euthyphro, 
when Socrates was asking these what is X questions, where the thought is that what something is, is going to help us determine whether some individual item has that property. So, for example, once we know what piety is, we can see or assess whether a certain action is pious. And similarly, the thought now is that once we know what goodness is, that's going to give us the ability to assess whether a toaster, a book, whatever is good. And that is the reason why the person who is, or the persons in the plural who are going to rule the best city need to know what goodness is, because they need to be able to assess which laws, which actions, which policies are good. So the proposal that Plato makes is that there is, as it were, an intelligible entity, somewhat along the lines of what we studied when we talked about Parmenides. And that is the form of goodness. And then all the many things, like the toaster or the book, which are good, are good by, by the way in which they relate to the form of the good. And Plato calls that relationship participation. So the many good things, is the proposal, participate in the form of the good. And that is what makes them good. Now, we'll talk a lot more about this in the next recordings. For now, I just sort of want you to begin to think about this this idea. And in order to do so, here's your homework assignment. Now, think about a case where, you know, where you assess different things as good, say, the toaster, a book, a person, and a theory. Let's say those are the four examples. You assess a toaster, a book, a person, and a theory as good. And ask yourself whether you can come up Given what we already studied in the Republic, whether you can come up with an idea for what could possibly be the feature that all of them share, if indeed they are all truly said to be good.